Again, welcome to Mathematical Structure for Computer Science, CS113, also known as Discrete Mathematics. In this section, we're going to discuss about strong induction and well ordering. So our main objective in this section is to go through strong induction, also example proofs using the strong induction, and also the well ordering property. So in this section, we will also introduce another form of mathematical induction. So strong induction, again, is a mathematical induction, which can often be used when, again, we cannot use or we cannot easily prove a result using the mathematical induction. So we only use the strong induction when we cannot use the mathematical induction to prove. So the basis step of proof by strong induction is the same as the proof of the same result using mathematical induction. I say we have two steps. I say the basis step and also the inductive step. So again, using the strong induction is when we cannot use the mathematical induction for proving. So strong induction to prove that P at N is true for all positive integer N when p at n is a propositional function, we complete the two steps, again, same as mathematical induction. But we will see the difference between the two now. So the basic step, we need to verify that the propositional p at one is true. That's the minimum. Then the second inductive step, we have to show that the conditional statement, p at one and p at two, all the way to p at k, is p at k plus one, this is a conditional. If p at one and p at two all the way to p at k, then p at k plus one holds for all the positive integer k. So strong induction again, something now called the second, it's called the second principles of mathematical induction or complete induction. So remember in the mathematical induction, if we say p at one is true, then we can say that if we are at p at k, then next will be p at k plus one. Here we are saying that if we start from one and two all the way to k, then it's p at k plus one. Now we do the example using the ladder again. Here we have the strong induction and the infinite ladder. So strong induction tells us that we can reach all rocks if we can reach the first rock of the ladder. Mathematical induction, we reach, if we are the first, we can go to the second. If we are the second, we can go to the third. But strong induction telling us that we can reach all the rocks if we are in the first rock of the ladder. And so for every integer k, if we can reach first k rocks, then we can reach the k plus one's rock. Now, to conclude that we can reach every rock by strong induction, we start with the basic step again, P at one. If it holds, then the inductive step, we are zooming P at one and P at two and P at three, all the way to P at K, holds for all arbitrary integer K, and it shows that P at K plus one must also hold. So we, have, we will have the show by strong induction that for every positive integer n, p at n holds, that is we can reach the nth rug of the ladder. So proof using the strong induction, uh, we have example here, suppose we can reach the first and second rocks of an infinity ladder. And we know that if we can reach a rug, then we can reach two rocks higher. Prove that we can reach every rock. Try this with mathematical induction. So with mathematical induction, I was, we proved this result using the strong induction. Uh, with the strong induction first, we can reach the first step. Then the duct inductive step, we say that the induct inductive hypothesis is that we can reach the first k rocks 
for any k greater than or equal to 2. So we can reach k plus 1. Rock since we can reach the k minus 1's rock by inductive hypothesis. Now with the mathematical induction, we said that if we can reach k for any positive, if we can reach k, then we can reach k plus 1. Then we keep going one step at a time. Here we say k should be greater than or equal to 2. So we can reach k plus 1 rock since we can reach k minus 1, like two steps. And so we can reach all the rocks of the ladder. Which form of induction should be used? Should we use the mathematical or strong? As we said earlier, we use the strong induction if the mathematical induction fail, where it fails to prove, we cannot use it to prove in a scenario. So we can always use strong induction instead of mathematical induction. But there's a reason to use it if it's simpler to use mathematical induction. So again, we can use strong induction anytime. But if it's very simple to use mathematical induction, then we use mathematical induction. But sometimes we may have problem that we cannot use mathematical induction to prove it, but we can use strong induction. So strong induction can be used always. In fact, the principles of mathematical induction, strong induction, and also well ordered property are all equivalent. And sometimes it is clear how to proceed using one of the three methods but not the other two. So next again, we talk about mathematical induction and strong induction. Next, we're going to talk about the well ordering. So the completion of the proof of fundamental theory of arithmetic. We have an example here. Here they say we should show that if n is an integer greater than one, then n can be written as the product of primes if it's greater than one. So solution, this is again our example. We should show that if n is an integer that is greater than one, then n can be written as a product of primes. So we need to prove this. So here we say that we should let p at n be the proposition that n can be written as a product of primes. So the basic step would be, again, we said greater than one. So starting from two. P at 2 is true since 2 itself is a prime number. Because here we are proving that an integer, n is an integer greater than 1, then n can be written as a product of prime numbers if it's only greater than 1. So 2. Now the inductive step will be the inductive hypothesis is P at J is true for all integers J within. If j is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to k. Now, to show this, we say p at k plus 1 must be true under this assumption. Two cases need to be considered. Remember, first case should be if k plus 1 is prime, then p at k plus 1 is true. Otherwise, k plus 1 is composite then it can be written as a product of two positive integer and b with again a is a is less than or equal to b and b is less than or k plus 1 and a of course should be greater than or we start from 2 so by the inductive hypothesis a and b can be written as a product of primes and therefore, k plus 1 can also be written as a product of those primes. Then hence here we say that it has shown that every integer greater than 1 can be written as a product of primes. Because here again, we say that if k plus 1 is a prime, then p at k plus 1 is true. And we are proving that the value should be n should be greater than 1. So it should be equal to 2 or greater. And it should be less than or equal to k. But 
But sometimes here we say, if this is not true, k plus one is prime, then it's not true, then k plus one will be a composite value. And also it can be written as a product of two positive integer a and b. Example of a composite value can be nine. If you reach nine, we can write it as three times three. 12 is not a prime, it's a composite four times three. But if I have seven, seven is a prime, one by seven. So by the inductive hypothesis A and B can be written as a product of primes and therefore K plus one can also be written as a product of those primes. Now proving using strong induction, here we can prove that every amount of postage, every amount of postage of 12 cents or more can be formed using just four cent and five cent stamps. We should prove that every amount of postage of 12 cents or more, we can use other four cent and five cent stamps. So solution will be let P at N be the proposition that the postage of N cent can be formed using four cent and five cent stamp. So the basis will be P at 12, P at 13, P at 14, P at 15 will hold the postage of 12 or more. So more 12, 14, 14, keep going, 16. I said, yeah, we choose only for 12, 13, 14. So a postage of 12 cents or more can form 4 cents and 5 cents. So we say P at 12 uses 3, 4 cents. P at 13 uses 4 cents and two four cent and one five cent. P at 14, we use one four cent and two five cent. P at 15, we use 15 cent. So that's the base, the beginning. Now the inductive step, we say the inductive hypothesis state that P at J holds for J should be greater than or equal to 12 by less than or equal to K where k can be greater than or equal to 15. And here we are assuming the inductive hypothesis, it can be shown that p at k plus one will hold. So if it's 15, if it's 16 plus one, we're going to use four, four cent. Now if it's 17, we may need three, four cent and one five, and we keep going. So using a dotted hypothesis, we say P at K minus three hold since K minus three is greater than or equal to 12. Now to form a postage of K plus one cents, we need to add four cents stamp to the postage for K minus three cents. Hence P at N holds for all N greater than or equal to 12. Now the proof of same example using mathematical induction now. Here we can prove that every amount of postage of 12 cents or more can be formed using just four cents and five cents, same question. Now we are using mathematical induction. Remember the strong induction we form a continuous value from P at 12, 13, 14, 15. Here we are going to form only one. So let P at N be the proposition that postage of n cent can be formed using four cents and this. So our base step will be postage of 12 cent can be formed using three, four cent stamp, that's it. Then the inductive step, the hypothesis P at K for any positive integer K is that the postage of K cent can be formed using four cent and five cent to show that P at K plus one where K is greater than or equal to 12. You know, we start from 12. We consider two cases now, let's see if it will work. If at least one four cent stamp has been used, then four cent stamp can be replaced with five cent stamp to yield a total of K plus one. Otherwise, no four cent stamp have been used and at least three five cent stamp were used. Three five cent stamp can be replaced by four four cent stamp to yield total of K plus one cent. So again, n greater than or equal to 12 will hold always. 
So those are the two examples comparing how strong induction was used. The basis step, we hold it on four continuous values, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we tested it and it works. So the inductive now, we can see we are moving the steps, P at K minus three. So, but with mathematical induction, K plus one, K plus two, step by step. So the next and the last method is well-ordering property. So here we say a well-ordering property again is if every non-empty set of non-negative integer has at least elements, you know, at least one element, the well-ordering property is one of the axioms of the positive integer. This is listed in the course textbook appendix one. So the well ordering property can be used directly in proofs as the next example illustrates. Uh, we'll see the next example. So the well ordering property can be generalized. The definition is a set is well ordered if every subset has a least element. So N is well ordered under less than or equal and also the set of infinity strings over an alphabet using lexicographic ordering is well ordered also so we'll see a generalization of induction uh, let's see our example here so using the well ordered property we need to prove the def definition uh, division algorithm uh, the division algorithm states that if A is an integer and D is a positive integer, then there are unique integers Q and R with R greater than or equal to zero less than D, such that A equal to D Q, D times Q plus R. So the solution here, we can let S be the set of non-negative integers of the form A minus, again, we have A minus DQ, where Q is an integer. The set is non empty since minus DQ can be made as large as needed. By the well ordering property, S has at least element R equal to A minus DQ O. And then the integer R is a non negative. It also must be case that R should be less than D. If it were not, then there will be a smaller non-negative element in S. Namely, it can be A minus D, Q O plus one equal to A minus D, Q O minus D, should be equal to R minus D, and it should be greater than zero. Therefore, they are integer Q and R with O, uh, greater R, greater than or equal to O or less than D. Uh, this will be the uniqueness of Q and R. Again, we're going to solve a problem on that. So this will be the conclusion uh, of this lecture. And our main goal of this lecture again is the strong induction. And we saw the difference between strong induction and also mathematical induction and also the well ordered property. Again, we'll see more example uh, in that section uh, in where order in our next section again thank you